The largest portion of the JavaScript debugging that I do uses the console. And there are some console statements I have learned over the past few years that have been helpful when debugging JavaScript. There's more than just console.log. So I wanted to share some of these tips as they might be helpful to others if you have not tried them yet. Now for this, I'm going to be using Chrome, but these console statements should work in any browser. So let me jump to Sublime and we'll get started. Now here's the little bit of code that I'm going to be using. It's just some nonsense code. Basically, I have an object created up here which has a method that logs to the console a greeting. Then I have a couple of functions that simply log to the console and then call another function. So init2 calls init3, init3 calls the greet method on this object. Init1 is another function. This one does a little bit more. Um, basically, it declares, it does a log statement, a console log statement, and then it declares a function. And basically, what that function does is checks to see if the name is equal to Steve. And it uses a random number to determine what name should be extracted from an array of names that's passed in. And so this function gets called recursively until the name is equal Steve. And then once that happens, we call init2 with that name. And then down here at the bottom is just immediately evoked function. Basically, all it does is we pass in an array of names and then we call init1 with that array. And so it calls this one up here. So some nonsense code, but it allowed me to show a few things with console statements. So first, everything is set to console.log. So let me jump out there and we'll show the console. And this is basically what we see. We see init1 has been invo invoked. And then it starts cycling through the names and it will log to the console each name as it comes across one until the name equals Steve. And then init2 is invoked, init3 is invoked. And then finally, we get the greeting invoked. Now, first thing I want to show is that there's more than just console log. There are other console statements that you can use. For example, this doesn't do much different than console.log, but there is a console.warn statement. Let me save that and you can see the difference. Basically, it causes it to stand out more from the other statements. You can easily pick it out. So if you need that, if you've got a lot of console log statements going on and you need to be able to pick it out, you can do that. Also, if you click that arrow, you get to key, see this call stack. So basically, which functions have been called before this console statement was logged? And we can see those functions that are called there. So that's the call stack. A, a very similar one is console.error. If I refresh that, you can see that this looks like a standard error message that you would see in the console. And once again, you can see the call stack as well. So you can see the order of functions that have been called before the console statement was logged. Now that can be very helpful when you're debugging to be able to see the stack without going into the debugger. And so console warn and console error, I like for that reason. All right, let me change this back to log and let me show you a mistake that I frequently made early on when I was using the console to, to debug. There would be an object or something I wanted to see as a part of the logging to the console. And so what I would generally do is I would enter a string into the console log statement and then I would concatenate that object onto the end because I wanted to see it and I wanted the string so it would identify where I was at when it was logged to the console. So let's see what happens there. When I refresh, here's that console log statement. 
Notice what it does to the object in this case. Because we are concatenating to a string, it calls the toString method that is associated with the prototype of that object. And so it converts it to a string. And so that's all we get is a string representation of that object, which simply really doesn't help us much at all. Now that would be a similar type of thing that would happen to an array. Let's take a look at that. Here it is up here. Now an array is more useful because it converts it to a string. However, I'm not able to open up and see properties and other things associated with that. So a better thing to do and sometimes it, people aren't aware of this, is you can put as many things in the console log statement as you want as long as you separate them by commas. So now if I put a comma before I log that object, it's much more useful. Now I can open up the object and I can see what's inside it. And so that's a better way to do that type of logging. And as I said, we could put additional things in the statement by simply separating them with a comma. Here's that name now being shown on the end. So that was a common error that I would usually make when I was trying to find where a problem occurred. All right, now another console statement that in certain situations can be helpful, not used a lot, but let me show you what it does. You can do a console.count. So for example, let's see how many times this function is, is called. I can enter console.count. And what's going to happen is each time this statement is logged to the console, it will record a counter with it. So we can see how many times that's logged. So now I refresh. It was only called once. Refresh again. This time it was called nine times before it got to Steve. So you can see each time it's displayed, there is a counter associated with it. Now, if I were to do a console.count with the name, it would display how many times that particular name was logged. So Lynette was four times, Tyson was four times, a total of 11 times before we got to Steve. So that, that was a good example there of console.count. All right, one other additional console statement I want to show you. Inside of init3 again, I'm going to do two console statements. Console.log, and I'm going to log to this console document.body. So this next console statement is very helpful when you're working with DOM elements. And that's dir. I just want to show you the difference of what you get if you use a console.log with a DOM element as opposed to dir with a DOM element. So the DOM element we're going to look at is the body. So document.body as I'm grabbing that up. Go ahead and save that and refresh. So the console log statement basically gives you a representation of the HTML. That's what you're seeing here. Now if that's what you're looking for, that can be helpful. However, if you want a JavaScript representation of that DOM object, that DOM node, then you want to use dir. See, you're getting a list of all the properties that's associated with that. And so you can look at those properties. Child element count, there's five. Child nodes, that's a node list, consists of a number of different things, 11 elements total. The text nodes, the header node, the div node. So if you're looking for the properties and to get information that way, then console.dir can be much more helpful. So hopefully you found that helpful. If so, I'd appreciate it if you would like the video. 
Also, if you're interested, on our website, I've included a complete list of all of our tutorials organized into different categories. You can visit that page by following the URL on the screen. To view another tutorial from our channel, click the video link in the center of the screen. We release new videos every week. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. And to visit our website for a list of tutorials and other resources on JavaScript, such as courses, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.